Sing Hallelujah. While many of us have a favorite hymn from the beautifully inspired hymns of praise that we have touched our hearts and brought tears to our eyes, the songs of Zion are unique to our church. They are songs that belong to a new time. They belong to a new era. They belong to our people. They are songs sent from the throne of God as a gift to the Church of Jesus Christ. They're inspirational and related to Christ and his promises of the latter day times and events. This gift was given to our late sister Arlene Buffington as our songs of hope and joy, looking forward to the fulfillment of the kingdom of Zion, bathed in the latter day glory of the restoration. For me, the songs of Zion were always part of our church. From the first day I visited the church in 1980, I heard them sung. What a unique gift and blessing for our church. Let's journey through a few of those songs and consider their meaning and application, because it's too easy to sing without paying attention to the words and their meaning. Starting with number 27, Sing Hallelujah, we read, There is a Savior, they call him Jesus. They say no other can save from sin. Now he's my father, my dearest brother, so step aside, world, and let my new friend in. When I was drifting, he dropped the anchor. When I was outcast, he brought me in. When I was sinking, he threw the lifeline. When I was dying, he let me live again. When I was losing, he won the battle. When I was anxious, he calmed the fear. When I cried, help me, he reached to save me. When I had no one, I found this friend so dear. In the chorus, so let me praise him, for I adore him. And I will sing it, oh yes, forevermore. Oh hallelujah, sing hallelujah. I found the lifeboat, praise God, I made the shore. Copyright 1980, Arlene Leah Buffington. In the Hebrew text, hallelujah is actually a two-word phrase. Hallelu, ya. And not one word. Because of this, the English word hallelujah isn't literally found in the Bible or Book of Mormon, but is used primarily in the Book of Psalms and translates to praise the Lord. It is an expression of joyous praise in song and of gratitude and adoration. Rereading those verses, the first verse reminds us that we have a Savior in Jesus Christ. He's our Father, our Brother, our Friend, our everything. And the chorus encourages us to never forget it and never stop praising Him. The second verse likens our lives without Christ to a sinking lost boat, drift in the seas of life. But Jesus is there to rescue us in this life and for all eternity. And the chorus reminds us to never forget it and never stop praising him. The third verse acknowledges that without him, we're fighting battles we can't win and we're overwhelmed with life's fears. But when we reach out to Jesus, we find salvation, victory, and even friendship in him. And the chorus reminds us to never forget it and never stop praising him. I find when singing this song, it's hard to whisper it softly. It's hard to not feel good. It's hard to not have a smile on your face or at least in your heart. It's hard to not yell out, oh yes, because he is our lifeboat, our salvation. Rather than being lost at sea, we're rescued from a life of loneliness, fear, and sin. Yes, this is a song of hope and acknowledgement that without him we are lost. But by humbling ourselves and calling out to him, Jesus is there to rescue us. Hebrews chapter 16 verse 19 says, Which hope we have as an anchor to the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. And as King Benjamin so clearly said, And again I say unto you, as I have said before, that ye have come to the knowledge of the glory of God, or if ye have known of his goodness, and tasted of his love, and have received a remission of your sins, which causes exceeding great joy in your souls, even so I would that you should remember and always retain in remembrance the greatness of God and your own nothingness and his goodness and long-suffering towards you, unworthy creatures, 
and humble yourselves even to the depths of humility, calling on the name of the Lord daily and standing steadfastly in the faith which is to come, which was spoken by the mouth of the angel. And behold, I say unto you that if you do this, ye shall always rejoice and be filled with the love of God and always retain remission of your sins. And ye shall grow in the knowledge and the glory of him that created you or in the knowledge of that which is just and true. Mosiah chapter 4, verses 11 and 12.